Ladies and gentlemen, my name's Paul. Hope you're having an amazing day. In this video, I want to focus predominantly on Zen 4 and Zen 5's core count, as there's been a lot of questions on the internet concerning will AMD raise the core count, especially for the desktop SKUs of uh, Ryzen 7000. We'll get right into it right after this uh, message from our video sponsor. If you're running a copy of Windows 10, which is not activated, of course, not only do you have to worry about the missing customization options, but there's also that annoying Windows desktop watermark reminding you to activate. Today's video is sponsored by whokeys.com, and they have an excellent price on Windows 10 Professional, as well as home keys. Yeah, and they also, of course, sell games. I've bought a few Windows 10 keys with my own personal account to test everything was legit and worked in preparation for this sponsored video. You can pick up one of their keys for 25% off using the coupon code RGT in the checkout. There's links to their website in the video description. Also, if you're building a few systems, there's bundles available too. Again, you can check out whokeys.com and use the coupon code RGT for 25% off the listed Windows 10 key prices. So just to get the obvious thing out of the way first, Zen 4 is going to launch later this year. Now, according to one of my sources, the mobile variants will not launch this year, but possibly see a debut and CES next year, although I've only had one source confirm that, so I'm trying to get it verified by more individuals. But yeah, um, when it comes to Zen 4, the obvious question is, will AMD increase the core count like we saw with Zen 2? After all, it has been now a couple of generations that AMD have been stuck with 16 cores, 32 threads. And while Intel haven't been exactly the most competitive with CPUs like the 11900, for example, Things are changing now with Intel's older lake, and it's going to certainly change a lot faster when we have future architectures. I'm hearing that, uh, you know, let's say 13th and 14th generation onwards from Intel is really, really good. So that leads to the obvious question. Will we see an increase in core count? Well, let me tell you what I've been hearing. So for the desktop, which is what I want to focus on just for a moment, one of my sources told me that AMD were investigating higher core counts, such as 24+. plus. However, Source 2 has told me that no, core counts are probably going to remain the same until Zen 5 at the least, and we'll get into that more in a moment. A third source told me that core counts remain at 16, but AMD did have internal silicon that they have been testing which has actually had core counts of 24 cores plus but it doesn't seem like at the moment anyway they will release this silicon now obviously amd could choose to but it doesn't seem like they will now i've also had someone tell me that the 170 watt uh figure for the uh zen 4 processors for uh, AM5 is possibly due to Ryzen V cache. Now, I'm not certain if I believe that because only one person has told me it. Another possibility is that they are going to be ultra high end flagship SKUs with higher clock frequencies, or possibly it could be higher power draw scenarios. You know how, for example, Older Lake has that. And yeah, AMD have been doing a lot of additions to Zen 4, like they're including AVX 512 and all that stuff. So how power draw gets affected with that, I honestly don't know. But again, we have seen 170 watts mentioned uh, from several leaks at this point by AMD. And I think it might have also been announced in official capacities as well. Now for mobile, the core counts will be 16 cores. I think we've actually seen some public evidence of this already, including some benchmarks. So I don't really need to tell you guys too much about that. Like it's 16 cores for mobile and that is a large increase. But I'm just told across the board that AMD want to make a huge um, splash with Zen 4 mobile. They really are going to be like hammering down on that. And it, it makes sense in just the, the ecosystem itself. Like just looking even outside of the competition, from Intel, you know, at the end of the day, even let's say Apple are at this point, of course, competition from AMD. And at the end of the day, it's not just about performance, but also energy consumption, because it's really easy to say, oh, we're going to increase the performance by X percent, and we're going to increase the clock frequency, and going to raise the cores, and it's going to make your breakfast in the morning. But if you're in a tight power envelope, like, well, you know, a mo <laughs> like a, a laptop, <laughs> like, if it drains in 30 seconds, it doesn't help you. So, 
one of the big optimizations for the mobile Zen is apparently power consumption, power consumption, power consumption. Okay, so what about Zen 5? Now, of course, this is quite a long ways away, and Zen 5 also is a little different in its actual design philosophy versus what AMD have done currently. Instead, Zen 5 is going to be more like older, like with a big, little, or heterogeneous architecture. I'll get more into that in just a moment, but this is the architecture that I'm seemingly finding out that does actually have an increased core count. One person has told me that almost certainly we're going to see an uh, increase in core count, and they've said that there's 24 cores minimum, but but really it does depend on what Intel are doing. And the second person has told me that 32 cores is uh, going to be accurate and they're going to be the high performance cores. Speaking of the performance cores and you know the energy efficient cores, so yeah, basically Zen 5, and I've discussed this previously, so I'll just quickly go over it here. Um, Zen 5 basically is two types of cores. The Zen 4 cores, will be the energy efficient cores and obviously Zen 5 will be the high performance cores. Now, from what I understand for the Zen 4 cores, there are some changes versus vanilla Zen 4. The first is that there are cutbacks to L3 cache, apparently. I'm hearing the SMT is identical. One person told me that it's possible it was cut, but they don't believe it is. And the other one's telling me that no, it's almost certainly the same. So SMT should be there. Uh, which is, of course, a little different from Intel's older lake. It would be fascinating to see if you could disable SMT for perhaps even more power draw, or whether it will be dependent upon the scenario. So, for example, if it's really, you know, a very tight power envelope, maybe. I don't know. That's just speculation. The next thing is apparently we're seeing an increase in L2 cache as well. I also wanted to talk more kind of in general about... AMD's longer term goal. You can consider this more of a bonus. Now, obviously, APUs are becoming increasingly prevalent and important in computing. So the number of CU, for example, in AMD's current devices, you know, it does range, but we're seeing eight or even more. And they're not exactly the most performance of uh you know, chips when it comes to like high-end gaming, but they are fairly decent. And we're now starting, of course, to see the transition to even more high performance because, well, first of all, we've got a lot more memory bandwidth thanks to the uh, change to DDR5 for the next generation. And also AMD will be switching architecture. So it's going to be getting rid of Vega and then moving on to RDNA 2, which is obviously going to be considerably more performant. It's a lot more energy efficient and it's basically just more gaming performance in general. And this is going to lead to several shifts. The first is I'm told that we're going to see the inclusion of what AMD are calling HSP or heterogeneous system processing. Now, it's really simple to just kind of explain this as it's pretty much the same memory system as what say the PlayStation 5 or something like that uses pretty much it's just like a solid block of memory that the cpu and the gpu can access this basically means you don't have to have different portions of memory for the cpu or gpu and this can be really helpful for things like copying data over if the cpu is handling something and then needs to throw it over to the gpu and vice versa and it makes sense and this is going to be something that's going to happen with the rdna2 generation of uh, apus in the future and this is all kind of setting up for an even further evolution of APUs. Um, basically, from my understanding, AMD eventually will be even sharing L3 cache across both CPU and GPUs. I don't have an exact time frame of this, unfortunately. I don't know the product, but I was told it is happening. And uh, it's going to be an interesting one because there's a ton of different opportunities that uh, this affords you uh, in terms of optimization, performance. And remember that it's not just a case of, um, you know, those in in kind of general terms, but there's also a lot of uh, die saving, that you, or say space saving that you can get there. Now, this is different, of course, from the infinity cache. And ultimately, the amount of memory bandwidth that we're going to be moving to here, you can start to see how a really powerful mobile device could start to be constructed fairly easily in just a couple of years' time. 
uh, that could easily outperform the older generation of consoles quite quite happily and at a really low power envelope particularly when we start to move on to more advanced packaging um, uh, processes excuse me such as 5nm and ultimately intel and amd are going to be pushing both of these technologies very extensively intel obviously um, uh, with the shift to discrete gpus it's going to be it's going to be very interesting personally i don't have such a love for uh, laptops that's just me personally i know some people love them personally i'm not so interested but with all of the work that companies like apple have been putting into their m1 silicon and future chips as well and of course we've also seen arm and others you know really go into power optimization territory it's something that you know intel and amd need to be very aware of like i'm not saying x86 is in danger it's gonna go the way of the dinosaurs far from it it's just that it's sparing them to really rethink and reprioritize and make very smart decisions going forward and yeah again high core counts are great but we also can't have mobile devices that quite literally are powered by nuclear reactors so kind of is what it is I'm going to be very interested to see the future. With that said, thank you very much for checking out the video. I'll see you soon. Take care of yourselves. Bye for now.